Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is a podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah. And the question I'm going to start us off with today is, how many books do you read at a time? And I was thinking about this recently because I was thinking about a character in a book that I'd read a while back. And this character, I think, owned a bookstore. But she had books in different parts of her life. Like there was her bathtub book. There was her breakfast book. There was her evening book, her lunchtime book. She had books just strategically placed all around her house, all around where she worked, all around pretty much her whole life that she had. And I thought, I don't know how she keeps them all straight. I only read one book at a time. And that's sort of true and sort of not. Um, I always, you know, was reading more than one book when I was in school. I did both a bachelor's and a master's degree, so that is no insignificant amount of reading. And, you know, I always had a novel in addition to my textbooks, so I always had more than one book going on. And even now that I'm not in school, I still read more than one book at a time, even though I would tell you uh, off the cuff that, no, I don't read more than one book at a time. But when I really start thinking about it, I do, because... There is the book that is sitting by my nightstand that my sister sent to me that is um, nonfiction and that I read in bits and pieces. It's about um, introverts and extroverts, and so I've been reading up on that. I don't um, read it every day, uh, but it's there when I, when I want to pick it up and read a little bit. So there's that one. I always have a book that I'm in the middle of, but that depends on whether it's a hard Uh, not a a hard or a soft copy, a physical book or on my Kindle. So I read a lot on my Kindle nowadays, but I also still love regular books. So it depends on what I have. If I'm reading a regular book, then that's usually uh, what I read at night before I go to sleep because I can't sleep if I don't read at least a little bit every night. And so that's the one that I usually have. But if I'm reading a physical book, I don't usually take that with me. And I've gotten into the habit of always having a book on my phone, whether I'm, you know, if I'm reading it on my Kindle, if I don't have a physical book, obviously that's the book that I would have on my phone that I would read. If I'm standing in line somewhere or if I'm at the doctor's office or, you know, whatever I have a few minutes where I'm just sitting around, standing around waiting for something, I've got that phone or the phone with the book on it. So if I'm reading a physical book, I have that one at home, and then I have always a book on my Kindle that I will take with me so that I have something to read when I have to wait. So if you count those, that would be three books that I'm currently reading right now because I am reading a physical book at the moment, and then I have one on my phone, and then I have the book that my sister gave me, the nonfiction. And then I realized that Even though I'm not physically reading it, I listen to audiobooks in the car when I am running errands, when I'm driving to work. Uh, My husband and I frequently commute together, but if I'm by myself in the car, then I listen to one of my audiobooks. He loves audiobooks too, so we sometimes listen to them together. So even though I'm not reading it, I still have a book going on. So currently I've got four books happening in my life, and I would tell you that I never read more than one book at a time. So clearly I don't know myself or something. (laughs) But the reason that I brought this up is because the book that I'm listening to in the car right now and the books that I have been listening to in the car for quite a while, several months now, I've been been listening to Terry Brooks. And you may know Terry Brooks. You may have read him. He is the author of the Shannara series. And there has been recently been a TV show made out of uh, the second of his original trilogy, Elf Stones of Shannara. And so you may have seen previews of that or you may have watched it. So I have been listening to those, and he has a new book, a new Shannara book, coming out in June. So I thought, hey, this is the perfect time to talk about him and prepare myself for that new book that I'm excited about. So 
I've been reading Terry Brooks since I was in high school. He has been writing since the mid-70s. So his first book, The Sword of Shannara, came out in the mid-70s, and he has been writing ever since. And... Well, first of all, growing up reading them, my dad, as I've said before, is a librarian. He got me into Terry Brooks as an author, and I always, in my head, pronounced the word Shannara, just because, you know, it was it was a book, and that's how my brain pronounced it, and I think my dad pronounced it that way, too, because when we chat about it, um, that's the way we would always say it. And then when I recently started listening to the audiobooks, all of the narrators say Shannara. In the first, the first two or three books, it just drove me absolutely batty because I'm not saying that my way of pronouncing it is correct. It's just the way it's been in my head for years, 20 years I've been reading these books. So <laughs> it was cracking me up because it drove me crazy that the uh, narrators in my audiobooks were pronouncing it differently than I had been pronouncing it. But now I've been listening to them for so long that... It's gotten stuck in my head, and I actually think Shannara in my head. So, anyway, I don't know how Terry Brooks initially meant to have the word pronounced, if that's the way he pronounces it, and that's why the narrators in the audiobooks pronounce it that way. I don't know. But, at any rate, Terry Brooks. He has a new book coming out in June, and it is the first in his... Um, it's called The Fall of Shannara. So it's uh, wrapping up the Shannara series, at least from one point of view. And if you've read them, then you know what that means from one point of view. The fascinating thing about Terry Brooks' books is that there are a lot of them. And there are the Shannara books, the specific Shannara books that come in often trilogies, sometimes longer series, and they take place at different points. So maybe I should start kind of at the beginning. So the Sword of Shannara, that was the initial one, about a uh, an elf named Shay Olmsford and his brother, Flick Olmsford, who uh, encounter a druid who tells them that he needs them to help him defeat a great evil that has invaded the four lands. And so they go on this adventure, eventually finding um, their friend, one of uh, whose last name is Leah. So there's the Olmsfords and the, the Leahs. Actually, that's another word. Leah, I've always pronounced it as, but the narrators always say Lee. So however you pronounce it. So the Olmsfords and the Leahs go on these adventures together. And that's the first one. And then in the so the first trilogy is Sword of Shannara, Elf Stones of Shannara, Wish Song of Shannara. The second book, Elf Stones of Shannara, is about Shay's grandson, Will Olmsford. And then the third book is about his children, Will's children, Bryn and Jer. So in that first trilogy, we get three generations of Shannaras who are found by the walker, I mean, excuse me, the druid, Alanon, who then needs their magic to save the four lands from whatever magic uh, is threatening them. So that's a really, really, really brief description of them, but they always end up going on these adventures, and my dad and I often laugh that they often end up going on these adventures with, like, no supplies. You know, they have to leave in the middle of the night, something threatens, and they, they run off, and they've got you know, like the clothes on their back and a piece of bread and some cheese. <laughs> and they managed to be gone for months at a time. And to some extent, that's true. But there's foraging and hunting and all of those things. But my dad and I used to joke that we were going to go on an adventure and we needed a talisman and we just needed some bread and some cheese and we would be fine. Anyway, so those were the first three. And then he continues from there. And it turns out, as you read these books, that they take place in the future, um, a very, very far off future after uh, the world as we know it has had some sort of apocalypse or war or something that has altered it. So there are now, this now looks more like um, the days of old before technology. There's no technology that, as we know it. Uh, magic has replaced the old sciences. And now the there are elves who, it turns out, have always been in the world, but they have been hit, they were hidden until um, the old world sort of passed away and they came back out into the new world. But whatever happened in the old world also created some new races. So you've got humans, you've got elves, you've got trolls, dwarves, 
etc. So it's definitely a fantasy series. You've got all the elements of fantasy. You've got the different the different types of creatures within the book. You've got magic. You've got adventure. All of the great elements of fantasy that you know suck you into the story, tell, get you into the adventure. But then it just takes on a life of its own. It's fascinating. If you love to read series then Terry Brooks really is an author that you should check out if you've never checked him out before because you will not be disappointed. If you love this world, you can immerse yourself in this world for a very long time. If you are someone who just doesn't like to leave a world after you have entered into a book, this is the series for you because you will get to immerse yourself, as I said, for a very long time. We're going to talk more about Terry Brooks and the Shannara series, but we are going to take our first break of the podcast, so stay tuned, and I will be right back. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. <laughs> yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Today we are talking about author Terry Brooks and his Shannara series. And as I mentioned before, there are a lot of these books. So there are, starting with The Sword of Shannara, then then here's the thing. So if you ever want to read this series, go to Mr. Brooks's website and look at the list called Reading Order, because you can read them in the order that they were written, which would mean that you would start with The Sword of Shannara. But there is a prequel called High King of Shannara, and you could start there. In fact, as I've been rereading all of these, I started, or re-listening, I guess, in this case, I started with High King and then moved on into The Sword. So, I, as I said, I started reading these in high school, and I've been reading them ever since. And there's about 20, if you start with uh, High King and move forward, there's about 20 that go in basically chronological order. There might be um, gaps of a hundred years or more between series and between characters and those sorts of things. A hundred, five hundred years sometimes even. So you get a really, really expansive length of time in this series also. So that's where I started. And I, I've i read them all and I love when they come out, but I've never really gone back and and read them all together. So that's what I wanted to do. That's why I started with High King and moved forward because I have been reading these books for, you know, 25 years or more. I don't remember exactly when I started. And even though I remembered most of the stories, I hadn't gone back and really reread many of them. Sometimes I reread the one right before the the next one in that series comes out because, you know, it's often a year between books in a series. And so it's really fun to go back and to start at the (laughs) beginning-ish. I'll get to that again. To start at the beginning and go forward and just see how this world progresses. See how these characters develop. And of course, characters, they're, you know, generally relations of the characters in the first book. So you get a lot of overlap. It's fun to see how things evolve in terms of... Um, relationships in the four lands, how things uh, are, you know, how just how the politics change, how the land changes, the different people that you meet in this series. But so here's the thing, as I said, they've moved forward and there are several um, different series, whether they have, whether they're trilogies or um, four or five books in each series, there's several of those. And then in June, he has the first in the fall of the Shannara series coming out. And I read that this is the kind of the conclusion of the Shannara series, except that it's not necessarily the end of the Shannara books. So here's the thing. So as I mentioned, these books take place very far into the future. There are also a few books that are before the prequel of the uh, of the high king, the first king. Excuse me, I kept saying high king, first king of Shannara. Ah, see, Shannara, Shannara, whichever. But then there's also a series, a trilogy called Genesis of Shannara, 
and two books in the Legends of Shannara before First King. And those are the ones that uh, sort of bridge the gap between what happened in the old world and how things started evolving into this new world after the apocalypse, after whatever had happened. Now, if you, it turns out that pretty much all of Terry Brooks's books are connected except for the ones in the um, Magic Kingdom for Sale series. That's another really good series, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But he has a series called um, Running with the Demon. And there are several books in that series. I can't remember exactly how many, but I will look and let you know. Um, and those are before the Shannara series. They take place in what could be considered sort of current time frame. And as you read them, you start to realize that they are the prequel to the prequel to the prequel. <laughs> they are the how the world gets to the place where then the Shannara series takes over. So you can read them in the order that he wrote them in starting with Sword of Shannara, or you can go all the way back to the um, the Running with the Demon series and start reading there and then move forward. Really, it's up to you, however you want to read them. And it's fascinating because there are mm, 20 to 30 books total, and they take you on this just wild and epic adventure. Now, quick side note before we continue, the Magic Kingdom for Sale series is not related to the Shannara series, also written by Terry Brooks, also in the fantasy genre. Also, he began writing it in the 70s or early 80s, I think, and it's about a man whose wife has died and he finds himself at loose ends in the world. He's extremely depressed. He has no purpose. He doesn't feel like he's doing anything of consequence in the world. And suddenly he sees this ad in a Christmas catalog. And first of all, that's your first clue that this isn't written now because he didn't find it online. He found it in the Christmas catalog, which is awesome. Because I remember those, and they were really fun, and I wish they still had them to the extent they had them when I was a kid. He finds this magic kingdom for sale. And through a whole series of events, he decides, what the heck, I'm going to buy it. And so he buys it, and he becomes the king of a magic kingdom. And he actually ends up kind of going through this, like... It's not really a port. Maybe you could call it a portal, but he he goes to a different world, a completely different world, not on Earth, called Landover, and he becomes the king. They give him this medallion, and it turns out that it's this whole series where the um, original king's brother is trying to gain control, and he's kind of an evil magician. And I don't want to give you too much, give too much away, but again, it's this very. It's it's a little more lighthearted than the Shannara books can be and it's um it's this there, there's a talking dog there's a wizard who tends to kind of blow things up when he's not careful there's a woman with green skin and green hair who sometimes turns into a tree her name is Willow there's just a lot of fun elements in that book and I started reading those in high school as well and there are five or six of those now and I don't know if I keep seeing things that there might be another one coming out but I'm never I haven't figured out if that's actual fact that there might be another one coming out or if it's just wishful thinking on the part parts of fans who are hoping that there will be another Magic Kingdom of Landover series or book in the series so as I said if you love fantasy then that's one that you want to then you should check out also and if you don't want to uh, take on the epic adventure of the Shannara books that you know there's a good 30 books in there some or, or so and you want a slightly smaller um, series than Magic Kingdom for Sale I would highly recommend I love them all I've actually reread that series a couple of times and now that now I'm, I'm listening to the Shannara series so I am rereading some of those for the first time. So, Terry Brooks, Magic Kingdom of Landover, and the Shannara books, 
and the prequel to the prequel to the prequel, the 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 running with the demon series, the word uh, the word in the void. I think that might be what the series is called. One of the books in there is called Running with the Demon, but the series is called Word the Word in the Void, and that tells of. The actions or the events that take place that lead up to kind of the end of the world as we know it and the beginning of the world as it's known in the times of the Shannara books. So we are going to take our second break of the podcast. And then when we come back, we'll be wrapping up this episode on Terry Brooks and the Shannara series. So stay tuned and I will be right back. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Today I am talking about author Terry Brooks and my love for his Shannara series as well as his Magic Kingdom for Sale, the Magic Kingdom of Landover series. And I mentioned before the break that the Magic Kingdom of Landover series is a little more lighthearted. And I don't mean that to say that the Shannara books are dark or depressing or anything. They're just... They're they're not as whimsical. They're not as lighthearted as the Magic Kingdom series. So if um, you do like your fantasy a little on the lighter side, then that would be the series for you. If you prefer your your fantasy a little um, darker, a little more um, conflict ridden, <laughs> then the Shannara books are for you. And they're not the Shannara books aren't scary. They aren't going to give you nightmares. You know, they're not horror or anything. They've they've got monsters. They've got evil. But one thing that I like is that good tends to win out over evil. Now, it doesn't just happen overnight, and it doesn't happen without a lot of hard work and loss, but it does happen. And I think for me, that's part of the reason that I do enjoy these books so much, because I know that there's going to be um, a grand adventure. There is going to be um, a quest that is undertaken, often by someone who seems, you know, very unlikely to be able to accomplish that quest. There are going to be um, characters that if... Even though they're new characters, I'm going to be familiar with them because they have the same surnames as other characters. You know, they're they're descendants of characters of the other books that I've read, and I know, so I know that they're going to there. There's going to be some kind of evil that is threatening or some some kind of quest that needs to be undertaken. There is going to be a party that comes together in order to go on that quest to defeat that evil, whatever it might be. There will be talismans of magic. There will be monsters that need to be faced. But generally speaking, good wins out over evil. And again, like I said, not without a lot of hard work and not without loss. But I know that there will be some kind of resolution, uh, some kind of ending. Usually happy, but there's some endings that, uh, you know, that are... That happiness comes with a price, so that may be why they're a little less whimsical than some other kinds of fantasy books. These are, I would say, adult fantasy books. Young adult, if, you know, I mean, it's not like, I, I obviously I read them in high school, but they aren't as, um, I wouldn't classify them as young adult. And I have a friend who wishes that there were more categories for, for books, that they weren't just, you know, children's young adults and adults. <laughs> he thinks that there should be a lot more categories so that you know exactly what age group or or what what to expect when you start reading a fantasy series or a series in general so you'll know just just how dark or just how um how 
how this world is going to present itself. And he's he's got a point, but so this is uh, I, th- I would say would be considered to be an adult series, but can definitely be read by the younger crowd. Again, there's nothing terribly graphic. There's there's you know there's battles that are fought, but you don't feel like you're in a bloodbath <laughs> or anything like that. It's not it's not gory. It's not scary. It's not horror. But as I said, there is always an epic quest. There is, um, there's loss. There's, but there's, there's friendship. There's loyalty. There's camaraderie. There, there, there's always these groups of people that come together, maybe having not known each other before the book, but then they have to find a way to work together to accomplish whatever goal it is that they have set out to achieve. And for me, I really enjoy books like that where it takes me on a story but it also gives me these developing characters these developing relationships and uh, that's part of that journey so it's not just a journey to find the talisman and defeat whatever it is that they've come to defeat no it's always the the development of the characters in the book as they realize what they can do as they realize what abilities they have whether magical or non-magical as they learn to work together as they learn to um build confidence just not only in themselves but in their relationship and then as they work to solve these problems that they've been given to solve so as i said if you like fantasy and if you like epic adventures then this is a great series if you like books that will take you you know if you like a series that will take you a long time to get through that will suck you in for a good long time because there's a lot of books this is definitely the book for you the series for you i am not going to tell you where to start if you want to start with the first book written sort of shannara sounds great if you want to start with um first king of shannara Perfect. That's awesome. Start there. If you want to jump back and start with Genesis of Shannara and the Legends of Shannara, that's awesome too. Or if you'd rather jump all the way back and start with um, The Word in the Void, hey, more power to you. I am not here to tell you how to read your Terry Brooks books. (laughs) Um, At any rate, I have been enjoying listening to them on the audiobooks. I'm really looking forward to the Black Elfstone, which is the first in the Fall of Shannara series that is coming out in June. Can't wait for that. Can't wait to see what's going to happen in this world and happen in these characters. Well, not, you know what I mean, the characters that you have learned, the families, I guess, would be a better way of putting it. Families that you have gotten to know throughout all of these books just to see where he's going to take it and see how he's going to wrap things up and like I said he's not necessarily done writing Shannara books but this kind of wraps up that one part of it he may go back and do other prequels or um, books within the series so highly recommend them go check them out if you love fantasy in the meantime i would like to thank you for joining me today i always appreciate you hanging out with me while i talk about books one of my favorite subjects I'm really excited about next week's podcast. I will be interviewing author Jasmine Silvera about her book, Death's Dancer. It's a really fun read. It's a great book. So we will be interviewing her, finding out more about her, more about the book, more about her writing style. So please join me next week as I interview author Jasmine Silvera about her book, Death's Dancers. Death's Dancer, singular, not plural, excuse me. Thank you again for joining me. As always, you can find all of our podcasts at www www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and any app that you use for your mobile device. You can find us on social media. I would love to hear from you on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr. You can you can find out some of the updates that are coming. For instance, you know, when I'm interviewing authors, I'll put that on there beforehand so you know who I'll be interviewing that's coming up. And I'd love to hear your suggestions. If you have books that you love that you would like to see featured on here or authors that, you know, maybe maybe I can get on the podcast to interview, that would be great. So find me on social media. I would love to hear from you. In the meantime, I hope you have a wonderful week. Go out there, enjoy the week, enjoy the weekend, but most of all, go get yourself lost in a good book. Thank you. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.com. 
gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program. Thank you.